everyone, Adam here, and recently I asked you to submit your burning questions regarding health, fitness, and nutrition. So today I'm here answering those questions in a new segment I'm calling Ask Adam. Our first question comes from at EJB0214, who wants to know what's the best way to gain upper body strength? The key to gaining strength is to incrementally increase the amount of weight you're lifting over time. For example, if your starting bench press is 65 pounds, each time you do that exercise, which should be fairly frequently, like one to three times a week, you need to be increasing that weight that you put on the bar by five pounds. So for example, 65 pounds is your starting weight, the next time you go to 70 pounds, and then 75, and then 80, 85, 90, and so on. And since we're talking about gaining strength, I would focus your efforts on two exercises that are gonna give you the most bang for your buck, the bench press and the overhead press. Get strong on those exercises. By splitting up your time and energy between like 13 different exercises at the same time, you're not gonna see the same type of linear improvement that you would if you were to just focus on those two. If you're learning to play the piano, don't also try and teach yourself the violin, the harmonica, the tuba, the flute, the bass drum, and the steel guitar. If you wanna gain upper body strength, pick an exercise and get good at it. Keep in mind that strength training is a long game. You can't just flip a switch and go from weak to strong one day. Every workout plays a role and is a stepping stone in attaining your ultimate goal. So be consistent and persistent. At Maresha wants to know my thoughts on apple cider vinegar. Okay, so there is some indication of health benefits of drinking apple cider vinegar, such as lowering blood sugar and reducing risk of heart disease. But many people make a lot of claims about what looks like the devil's urine that are just not founded by science. One of those claims is that it can help you lose weight, which is not something that I've ever found evidence of. But it is safe to use and to drink as long as you don't, you know, swallow copious amounts of it. The only way I could see it actually helping you lose weight is by making you so nauseous you don't want to eat anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna swig it from the bottle like a frat boy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dilute it. The key is not to smell it. Don't smell it. <laughs> Tasty. Okay, it's not actually that bad when it's diluted. Just don't smell the pee bottle. At Codename Honey wants to know, what is more efficient for muscle gain? Heavy weights and low reps or light weights and high reps? The most efficient way for you to gain muscle is by lifting heavy weights for low repetitions. By heavy, I mean 75 to 90% of your one rep max, and we're talking four to six repetitions. Not 46, four to six. The reason I suggest this is because having a good foundation in strength first will make you a more capable lifter later. Now, lifting heavy does not mean cheating repetitions and it does not mean unsafe ego lifting. What it does mean is stressing your body enough to facilitate growth. Body weight squats and 10 pound bicep curls do not do this. You can do a million repetitions and really make yourself sore, but your muscles aren't gonna get any stronger and they're not gonna get any bigger. However, lifting heavy weights will cause you to get stronger, and the stronger you are, the bigger your muscles will get. With that said, there are a few non-negotiables when it comes to gaining muscle. And here they are. You should focus your efforts on heavy compound strength training, squats, deadlifts, overhead press, and bench press, exercises that train multiple major muscle groups at one time. You also need to follow a high protein, high carbohydrate diet and eat 10% more calories than you will burn throughout the day. At Jennifer Lieb underscore wants me to talk about waist trainers. Waist trainers are nothing more than modern day corsets. They have a more catchy name now, but they're still built on the same archaic idea that somehow by squeezing a woman's waist for an extended period of time, it's gonna make her more thin. Women have been using them for centuries, but just like wearing a tight pair of pants doesn't make your butt smaller, a waist trainer isn't gonna help you get more thin without doing some serious damage to your body. Definitively, they will not help you lose body fat but they can harm your organs by squeezing you too tight for too long around the midsection. They can cause excessive sweating which can contribute to dehydration and lead to skin rashes. They can give you acid reflux by squishing around the stomach acid in your belly. Waist trainers may help you look better while you're wearing them, but as soon as you take them off, you haven't solved the problem. They're gym spanks. Wearing them for an hour at the gym is probably not gonna do any long-term damage, but it can be dangerous when taken to the extreme. At GinaBit76 asks, is doing legs every day bad? That question's a little bit vague, so I'm going to make a couple reasonable assumptions. 
First, I'm going to assume that you don't literally mean seven days a week, because if that's what you're doing, then you should, you should not do that. Second, I'm going to assume that you mean a leg day, like a bodybuilding type workout. But I understand why you ask, because on the surface, that makes sense. If you want a group of muscles to grow, you need to work that group of muscles more often. But if you are fatiguing your muscles that much, and you're leaving the gym feeling like a newborn Bambi, three or more times a week, you're not giving your muscles enough time to recover, which is a vital part of hypertrophy. Remember, when you're working out, you're not building your muscles, you're breaking them down. Muscle repair is what builds bigger muscles. When you're in the gym, work hard with high intensity, but make sure you give your body enough rest, 24 to 48 hours, to avoid overtraining or plateauing. Stimulate your muscles, don't annihilate them. At That's Nessa 1313 wants to know my thoughts on sweet sweat, fit teas, and cleanses for weight loss. Ooh, this question is filled with goodies, so let's break them up here. Sweet sweat has one thing going for it. That's a good name, right? I mean, that is, that's a good name. Who thought of that? As for weight loss though, it's very similar to the waist trainers we just talked about. It's gonna make you sweat, but sweating doesn't mean you're burning calories or losing body fat. It's just your body's way of cooling off when it gets hot. So any weight you actually lose using sweet sweat is just water weight and it's gonna come right back on once you rehydrate yourself. The main ingredient in sweet sweat is white snow petrolatum, which is literally just petroleum jelly. They add some oils in there probably to moisturize your skin and maybe make it smell nice, but don't be fooled. It's literally just fancy Vaseline in a black and yellow box. Six ounces of sweet sweat is $26. Eight ounces of Vaseline is $8. If you want to use that product, you're better off just saran wrapping yourself with Vaseline on your belly like kids do in high school wrestling. At least then you'll be saving yourself 20 bucks. So let's talk about tea. Herbal teas like green tea have been shown to have a lot of health benefits, but their effect on weight loss is minimal. But that hasn't stopped companies like Fit Tea from selling false hope to people desperate for change. These teas are considered dietary supplements, which means they don't have to back up any of the claims they make on their labels. Did you know that? I'm strongly against tummy teas, not because they don't work, and believe me, they don't work, but because the people shilling them make claims that they can't and don't have to back up, which to me shows a lack of integrity and honesty. Now, there is a few ways you could lose weight drinking tea. Because you're drinking more water with your tea, you'll feel more full and you won't want to eat as many calories. You could lose some temporary water weight because the extra water will be flushing out the excess salt and retained water, which could help reduce bloating. And these teas are diuretics, which means you'll be stopping off in the bathroom more, so you could lose weight that way. In fact, I think I'm gonna start my own tea company called Shit Tea, the natural colon cleanser. The last part of this question is about cleanses. Have you ever noticed that the people who market these products never exactly tell you what toxins your body is being cleansed of? They leave it purposely ambiguous because there's not really anything in your body that those products could actually get rid of. A face mask is not gonna help you get mercury out of your bloodstream. Your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, and your GI tract already do a great job of ridding your body of harmful substances, much better than any cleansing juice or detoxifying foot pads ever could. There's no tummy tea and no colon cleanse in the world that's gonna take the place of consistent, healthy habits. It might give you some instant gratification when you get up off the toilet, but it's not going to jumpstart you into a new healthy way of life. That will only come from adopting a healthier lifestyle. At underscore underscore yell yeah, that's two underscores, asks, keto diets? No idea what they even are. I feel like keto would be a good name for a dog. Keto. Keto is short for ketogenic, which is a diet where 80% of your calories comes from dietary fats, 15% or so comes from protein, and less than 5% comes from carbohydrates. Usually our bodies use carbohydrates as energy, and so when you restrict the amount of carbs you take in by that much, your body's put into a metabolic state called ketosis. And ketosis breaks down stored fat into molecules called ketones, which your body uses as fuel. Just like any other fad diet, there are people who absolutely swear by it. And so my opinion is this, the best diet is one that you can stick to. So if this is something that will help you live a healthier, happier lifestyle in the long run, then absolutely go for it. 
With that said, I have my doubts about its sustainability for most people. I've made it pretty clear in my past videos that I don't think cutting out an entire food group is a good long-term solution. My other concern is when you cut out carbohydrates, your body's glycogen stores, its preferred choice of energy, also drops. And that means it's gonna be really hard to find the energy to train consistently and train intensely. <laughs> I almost reached for this again. Nope, nope, not doing that. At underscore Dirty Diana asks, can you share your opinions on meal replacement shake programs like Shakeology and Herbalife, please? Well, of course, Diana, since you asked so nicely. Where do I start? There's a lot not to like about multi-level marketing companies like Herbalife, Shakeology, Arbonne, and others. I don't like how they have to force you to recruit your family and friends to buy products they don't want or need. I don't like how there's no requirement for their coaches to be certified or have any sort of formal training about fitness or nutrition. I don't like how their transformation stories are often exaggerated. And I don't like how their products are often overhyped and even lied about just to pocket a little bit of sales commission. This isn't to say there aren't good, genuine people who've seen success using these products and want you to see success too. Of course there are. But as a whole, the business practices and the marketing techniques of these companies are really deceptive and untrustworthy. In fairness, these products, just like any other foods or supplements on the markets, will work or not work based on the rest of the habits you combine them with. Your results will be a combination of all the things you put inside your body. But remember that Herbalife and Shakeology and Arbonne, they do nothing to teach you healthy habits. They don't teach you how to live life without their products. So you either have to keep buying them forever or risk gaining weight back. And that's exactly what they count on. Don't get dependent on that, you don't need it. So let's recap because there seems to be a theme today. If you wanna get healthy and fit, you don't need tummy teas or colon cleanses. You don't need to slather on the sweet sweat and wrap yourself in a waist trainer. And you don't need to pour apple cider vinegar inside your Herbalife shake. You do need a nutritious diet, a regular exercise routine that includes heavy lifting, and time. Thanks everyone for all your questions. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And if you have a question that is burning inside you, submit it in the comment section down below. I'll be choosing the best ones and answering those in next month's segment of Ask Adam. In the meantime, stay highly motivated. I'll see you soon. Why are you doing me so good? Am I shiny? Play the piano!